heroes from time immemorial have lived for something greater than themselves. They may live for their country, for family, for principle, for love, or for God. The motivations differ, but by definition, heroes have a transcendent function, bringing renewed life not only to themselves but to the world. The structure of the human brain shows evidence of our evolutionary history. Parts of it are identifiable today as similar to the brains of our reptilian and mammalian ancestors. The warrior archetype overlays the aggressive and territorial tendencies we share with reptiles with distinctly human traits in meeting basic needs for safety, food, and sex. The altruist archetype, on the other hand, overlays the mammalian brain with distinctly human features. Mammals not only suckle their young, they also like to cuddle up with each other, and they form lasting bonds. When predators attack mammalian herds, the old, the weak, and the ailing will go to the outside of the pack, sacrificing themselves for the good of the others. Our mammalian heritage gives us the capacity for love and devotion, and an instinct to sacrifice ourselves when necessary. The altruist archetype helps us to bring these virtues to consciousness, so that we can choose not only whom we love, but also if and when we are willing to sacrifice ourselves for others. As with other archetypes, the expression of the altruist evolves from very concrete to more abstract. In primitive societies, human sacrifices were offered to curry favor with the gods. More advanced cultures revered great heroes and religious saints and martyrs who were willing to die for their country or their faith. In our own time, it is expressed in our willingness to forego individual achievement, to be a good team player, to sacrifice for our children, and to give to the less fortunate. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac dramatized the healing power of martyrdom. If one's love for one child is great, offering up that child is the ultimate sacrifice, greater even than sacrificing oneself. Taken metaphorically, the willingness to sacrifice one's child may represent a step beyond the narcissistic egocentricity of the orphan that requires us to learn to give and care not only when it is easy, but also when it is difficult, when it feels as if giving is at one's own expense. Sacrifice and martyrdom at their base is a recognition that I am not the only person in the world. Sometimes we chose to do something not so much because we want to, but because it will be good for someone else or because we believe it to be right. Some sacrifice is necessary if we wish to interact lovingly with other people. And although it may not make us feel ecstatic, we all know the sense of joy and self-esteem that results when we act to help others. The Greek myth tells us the story of Persephone, daughter of Demeter, the harvest goddess, who was kidnapped by Hades, the lord of the underworld, who was in love with Persephone. Demeter was so saddened by Persephone's abduction that she sat crying instead of making the crops grow. As famine spread throughout the land, Zeus intervened and had Demeter's beloved daughter return to her. When he did so, the crops and flowers flourished once again. Yet because Persephone had eaten a pomegranate seed while in the underworld, she had to return there for a portion of each year. That portion of the year, the earth experiences winter, or a symbolic death. Understanding that death is basic to nature is part of accepting the sacrificial aspect of life. The leaves fall off the trees every autumn, making spring blossoms possible. All animal life, including humans, lives by eating other life forms. Every life breath depends upon our symbiotic relationship with plants with whom we exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. In that, our bodies decay and fertilize the soil. This is the wisdom that fertility religious teach us, the knowledge that death and sacrifice are prerequisites to rebirth. This is a basic law of the natural and spiritual worlds. Our lives are our contribution to the universe. We can give this gift freely and lovingly, or we can hold back as if it were possible by diffusing life to avoid death. 
but no one can. The final lesson of the altruist is to choose to give the gift of one's life for the giving sake, knowing that life is its own reward and remembering that all the little deaths, the losses in our lives always bring with them transformation and new life that actual deaths are not final but merely a more dramatic passes into the unknown. Most altruists identify themselves as the givers, which is characteristic of them, but giving cannot be transformative unless it is received. If someone gives to us and we refuse the gift, no harm necessarily is done, but no great good is accomplished either. If someone gives to us and we use what they give to enable our addiction or other bad behavior, actual harm results. If we develop an attitude of entitlement, we may receive an enormous amount but never notice. The result may be that others stop giving to us because their gifts seem so invisible and devalued. Once we define ourselves as the giver in a particular situation or relationship, we may not notice how much we also receive. Therapists learn from their clients, teachers learn from their students, ministers learn from their congregations. When the energy is not flowing both ways, something is wrong. If the giving and receiving happen with no blocking, then both receive more than they give, because the process intensifies and enriches the energy exchange. The more we give in this kind of free way, the more we get, because nature abhors a vacuum, it fills us up. Human beings have an innate need to sacrifice for something beyond themselves. Many self-destructive and addictive tendencies in our me-first world can be traced to our failure to honor in ourselves the human need to sacrifice for something greater than ourselves. If we do not sacrifice consciously for something we believe in, we will be possessed by the martyr's shadow, behaviors that threaten to take our lives but bring no redemption. Sacrifice can be fulfilling only when it is fueled by genuine passion. The most authentic expression of altruism comes from love, and when we really love someone, we do not feel separate. In a warrior culture, the emphasis is on proving ourselves. Therefore, how much money, approval, and attention we get depends on how we measure up in comparison with others. In an altruist culture, people merit money, approval, and attention simply because we care about them. They do not have to be specially gifted or work terribly hard. They just have to be themselves. Those in whom the altruist archetype is expressed fully care about others throughout the world not simply as a virtuous act of charity, but because they really believe that we are family.